Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I am going to talk to you about how to open your lymphatic, your drainage, your detox pathways and I'm going to help you understand what this means. I'm going to help you understand how to do it and perhaps most importantly of all, I'm going to help you understand the order in which you need to do these things. This is the trick and not a lot, not many people will tell you this. If you do these things in the wrong order, not only are you slowing down your healing progress, you're actually potentially hurting yourself. You're actually probably making yourself not only feel worse, but slowing down your progress. Progress. and I know that's not what you want so today I'm going to teach you how to actually do this in the correct way how to do this in the right order and also what the hell does this actually mean you know I see this in all of the Facebook groups I see it everywhere you got to open your drainage pathways you've got to open your detox pathways and a lot of the time I'm thinking like no one knows what this actually means they're all just repeating the, the same phrase that they've heard they're like oh you don't feel good you need to open your detox pathways first you need to open your drainage pathways first what the hell does it mean am I going to help you figure that out today so just before I start what are your detox and drainage pathways why are they blocked how do you open them and what order do you want to open them in for better results i'm going to teach you this today so the first thing you have to understand is i want you to look at this like an analogy i want you to look at this like a river like a river flowing think about your detox pathways as as a river if at any point for some reason you have so much flowing through the river at one point that it bursts its banks so that the river all the water in the river comes out you will feel terrible you will feel absolutely awful and this is what a lot of people are doing wrong they're working on these the last step stages in these detox pathways and not working closer to the mouth of the river so you create this overwhelm and, and you'll feel bad you're not helping your body at all you're overwhelming it and you don't want to do that you need to work with your body if you want to heal because your body's what's doing all the healing okay you have to work with it not fighting against it so your detox and drainage pathways basically what this means is these are the natural inbuilt mechanisms that your body has to remove toxins you know there's a lot of things that people say when you're looking at at detox you know so like for example i'll talk about bioresonance other people are talking about bio binders or doing chelation or doing like different different things like these are these are, are not your body's natural detoxification pathways when we're looking at opening your detox your drainage pathways we're looking at these natural inbuilt mechanisms that you have in your body and figuring out why they aren't working or how they need extra support so they can work faster this is really what's important this is what you really need to understand you you might have a chronic health problem you might maybe you you know you need to detox maybe you don't feel that good but you can see people around you you know they're exposed to toxins every day they put makeup on they're maybe working in on an oil rig you know they're exposed to chemicals people working in like in a dentistry office you know they get exposed to a lot of mercury and they're fine you know they're okay you you, you probably if you have mold like you know people in your house didn't get as mold didn't get as sick as you from that mold exposure or you know of other people that have lived in worse situations and they're actually fine like they don't have really any problems at all and the key distinction here the key difference is those natural systems that that person has in their body are working better than yours and therefore you're less resilient you're less able to handle toxins you get exposed to a little bit of toxin and it causes this river to overflow it causes it to burst its banks and then you feel bad you will have symptoms as a consequence so basically what we're doing with opening your drainage and your detox pathways is we're trying to make this river that's flowing we're trying to make it wide so that it can handle more toxins so that they can flow out of your body more easily without bursting out over the banks so we have to start towards the ocean you know all rivers start up in a mountain and then they flow towards the sea is where the width of the river is biggest you've got the most amount of water because you've got all the different springs that connect together to form this one big river so you've got like a spring over here and a spring over here on top of this mountain and this mountain and then they come together and they connect and then this is kind of like toxins you know you've got a, to a source of glyphosate exposure from your food you've got some lipopolysaccharides from your gut you've got a little bit of mold all of these different sources they come together and they all flow into this same detox pathway and this is something that's also really important is understanding that most of these things leave your body in the same way so mold and the mycotoxins that they produce leaves the same way that mercury and other types of he heavy metals leave it the same with glyphosate glyphosate like these are all fat soluble toxins they all lead through the same pathway and when you understand that that's really helpful because you can you're like well it doesn't really matter what my source of toxicity is i've tried to address the root cause that's fixed and now i do the same thing regardless and and, and the reason that this is true is look at all these other people around you that are healthy and they aren't like doing detoxes or they aren't cleansing or they aren't having to do all these things it's because these natural mechanisms inside of the body are working they're functioning at a capacity that exceeds the amount of toxins they're exposed to and the, the water never breaks the bank it never comes out of the it never flows over the side of the river so these mechanisms
reasons, we have to work from where it's widest to where it's narrowest. And we have to work in that order. Otherwise, we will cause problems. So the most important thing, the first place we have to start is we have to look at your bowel movements. This is the first step in opening your detox and drainage pathways. If you aren't consistently having a bowel movement every single day, that should be the number one biggest priority on your list of healing. The thing is, constipation is actually a very solvable problem. Personally, I have an 80% success rate in helping people resolve this. I have a formula that I've, from working with all of these clients one-to-one -one and resolving my own constipation, you know, I had, I would go for seven days, 10 days without a bowel movement. I would have bloody hemorrhoids. I would have like really, really poor gut health. My stool would come out. It was like, it looked like rock solid. I, I jokingly used to refer to them as depleted uranium. It's like the most, one of the most dense substances known to man, like extremely hard, extremely dense. And fixing this is really important. And with everything that I learned fixing mine and now helping with like, probably we've got to be looking at nearly a thousand people now resolve their constipation. I've created a formula that you can follow. You can watch my video. So it's a, a full guide on YouTube. You can search William Dickinson constipation solve. If you follow those steps, there's an 80% chance that you're going to resolve your constipation. If you're in that other 20% that people that it doesn't fix, there are more steps that we can add on top. It's still the right place to start. This is the same way that you have to understand that your body has inbuilt natural mechanisms that it uses to detox. These drainage pathways are, are in everyone. The, everybody has a bowel movement in the same way. Like there's a formula, there's a recipe. And if we can figure out where the imbalance is and correct it, you can correct these bowel movements. So first step, make sure you're having a bowel movement once a day. And if you're not, fix it. And don't let anyone tell you like you can't. You can. You absolutely can. I've seen so many people do it. I've even worked with people in very complex situations, you know, where we have medications that exacerbate constipation like opiates and things. And we've resolved constipation. Other more complex things where we have different physical traumas to the body, you know, spinal cord problems, genetic stuff, a lot of different contributing factors. You can still always improve it. There's always something you can do. Resolving constipation should be your number one priority. If any anybody has ever told you, you need to open your detox and drainage pathways. That is step number one. If you do anything else before you work on this, there's a really good likelihood you will feel worse instead. And that's because you're overwhelming this, this system. This river is, is bursting the banks. So the next step we have to go from here is we have to look at your microbiome. Your microbiome is like an organ. The microflora, the organisms that live in your gut are like an organ to your body. So in the same way that your liver is important, and we're going to talk about that, the same way that your lymphatic system is important, the same way that all of your little detox pathways like methylation and glucuronidation and sulfation and all these other things are important your microbiome is like an organ for your body and if any of your organs don't work you will get sick and if your microbiome as an organ isn't healthy it will give you problems so fix the constipation next step fix the microbiome you will also know if you have microbiome problems because you could potentially have issues in other areas of your body so really good indicators of microbiome imbalance obviously the gut is going to be the first place you'd look you know if you've got bloating if you've got gas if you've got SIBO IBS if you've got chronic infections in the gut, if you've got food sensitivities, you probably have a microbiome imbalance. But taking it a step further from that, if you also develop things like skin problems and like visible like yeast or fungal things, if you've got frequent urinary tract infections, and that's more specifically for women, but does apply for men too. If you've got problems with the mucosa on your body anywhere, so in your eyes, dry eyes, in your mouth, any lung issues, like these are all indicative that you have a microflora imbalance. This is your next step, you know, forget the dry brushing, forget Get the lymphatic system movement forget the liver support like none of it is going to help you until your microbiome is working for you because all of these other systems rely on your microbiome you know all of your lymphatic fluid drains into your gut a little bit goes through your kidneys it's more going into your gut your immune system is in your gut all of your fat soluble toxins leave through your gut and if your microbiome isn't healthy you're missing an organ it's like you don't have an organ that you need to detox to for your drainage pathways to work so correct that microbiome i have dozens of videos videos on how to do this on YouTube. I will say this is always, it tends to be quite a unique or specific thing. You know, this is why alternative medicine exists because you, you always need a personal, personalized approach, but there are good general rules of thumb. So I'll give you them. Using a probiotic can be really helpful. If, if you've got a, like a lot of dysbiotic organisms in a, they're more like opportunistic and pathogenic. You could start with a soil based organism to build your dose up to improve your tolerance and then shift to a lactobacillus bifidobacterium blend. If you're just missing have the healthy flora. Just go straight in with the lactobacillus bifidobacterium blend. As I said, several videos on YouTube if you want more detail, but that's the first step. Next would be look at the diversity of your diet, particularly FODMAPs. You know, the low FODMAP diet exists because it reduces the amount of fermentable fibers in your in your digestive system. The thing is, those are the things that feed your microbiome and improve your diversity. So you want to look at the low FODMAP diet and do the exact opposite. You want the high FODMAP vegetables. These are the
are the ones that are going to feed your microbiome diversity. So this is your onions, this is your garlic, this is your like the, the pectin in in apples. This is uh, a like Jerusalem artichoke. This is variety is also key here as well. So it's not just about having high FODMAP. Try and have a lot of different types of of things. So this is have your carrots, have your beetroots, have your swede, have your squash, have some greens. You know, the more diverse that you have, the more microbes you'll feed. And it's not just about fibers. It's about polyphenols and and other plant chemical compounds as well. These also have antimicrobial effects that have a very powerful balancing effect. You don't have to take like straight oregano oil to to act as an antimicrobial. And you you probably don't want to be taking a dose but something like that because it actually creates more disruption in the microbiome. We want to try and work on improving that diversity. So put some oregano on your in your soup or on your pizza. You know, if you can eat, like, I can eat pizza now. Like amazing. Wow. That's really cool. I can have pasta. So put some oregano on it. You know, it's it's nice. Like have the pesto, have the the, the basil, like all these different things in their whole food form are really, really, are really, really good. You can also do juicing. This concentrates some it, it removes a lot of these insoluble fibers and concentrates the soluble fibers. This can also be really helpful for constipation, but you'll know that if you go and watch the constipation guide. So yeah, go and check that if you haven't. Constipation solved, William Dickinson. Go on YouTube, find it. It's a really good video. So working on your microbiome diversity, very, very important. There are other things you can do, but they're more custom specific. This is just a general template and you can do more things individually based on, on the individual. And Brett in the chat just said, this is why carnivore is not a solution because the microbiome requires a wide variety. You're exactly spot on. This is why carnivore is not a solution. Many times, so I, I know some people that do great on carnivore and that's great. You know, if it's working for you, then 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 good for you. But it's, it's actually probably exacerbating this microbiome imbalance further. It's saving, it's the thing is, if you're eating food that you can't digest, you're going to have problems and removing a whole, a whole food group, you know, all plants, you're going to reduce the amount of work that your digestive system has to do. So it can work temporarily, but it's actually not fixing the problem. It's more like management. It's the same way that taking a, like a, a medication would, would help. You know, you're just kind of finding a way to manage the problem instead of actually fixing, fixing the issue. And this is necessary sometimes and, and medication is necessary sometimes. So I'm not saying don't do it if it's working for you, but you have to understand it's probably not actually fixing this, this issue. Nice one, Brett. Good comment. So from here, we move one step up. We have to look at your bile. Your bile flow is key. Not only does your bile protect you from SIBO and gut dysbiosis, it's like soap. It cleans your intestines. It's also how all fat soluble toxins leave your body. So this is as, as I mentioned, this is your mercury, this is your aluminium, this is uh, glyphosate and pesticides, this is any estrogens that you're exposed to. You know, if you're wearing some synthetic clothing, you're getting plastics in your body, they're leaving through your bile. This is basically all of your fat-soluble toxins. You can't do this if your microbiome doesn't work, and your microbiome doesn't work if you aren't having frequent bowel movements. So you can see there's a hierarchy to these problems. Fix the constipation first. Fix the microbiome, you know, balance the flora out, correct that. Then you need to look at the bile health. The bile needs to pull the toxin like from your body and put it in your gut and then the microbes will do their work and they'll remove it and it'll come out in the stool so how do we how do we improve the health of the bile there's a couple of things you can do um and again this is this is hard talking about things because it's always personalized but some some good ideas just to throw at you so some things that can be really helpful here are looking at the ingredients of bile and making sure that your body has them so sometimes people benefit from ox bile or things like tudka this actually gives your body the raw ingredients to make more bile which is really really helpful you can look at using sunflower lecithin it's very high in choline this can make your bile a lot thinner so if you've got stagnant bile flow and you've accumulated a lot of toxic bile in your gallbladder and it's just sludgy this can really help with um, thinning that out so this could be helpful with 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 gallstones this can be helpful if you have a methylation problem as well choline is actually a methyl donor one step higher than this it, we're going to be looking at the liver and methylation is a really important part of that so uh, this can be really helpful here as well um, if you have uh, low stomach acid correcting that can be really helpful as well your your bile actually doesn't release if your stomach acid isn't a, a, a strong enough ph if it's if your uh, if your stomach acid doesn't get strong enough your bile will struggle to release so improving the health of the bile is all about having it flowing as consistently as possible so that it's being exposed to the microbiome so that the toxins are being put in the gut so they can be removed um, absolutely essential eating fat if you don't eat fat you don't release your bile so if you have fat intolerance it's probably a, a bile problem and we need to figure that out you need to be eating fat to stimulate your bile to be released to be discharged from your gallbladder so we need to make sure that we've got the ingredients for it we've got to make sure that we've got stimulation for it so other things you could look at um, liver, liver and gallbladder flushes coffee enemas can be really really helpful um, um, especially if you've got a lot of toxins. So getting this gallbladder working and moving this bile out, really, really important. But again, you'll struggle with this if you don't have the right microbiome and if you're if you're constipated. Doing this will just probably make you feel worse. So again, hierarchy to this problem. So get that get that bile flowing. The next step is to go up one step further, which is your liver. So all of these toxins that get packaged in your bile, they get packaged in your bile by your liver. So your liver needs help. Your liver is kind of like this massive filter for your blood. So all of the blood in your body is circulating 
everything and every single molecule goes through your liver once every three minutes we need to make it so that your liver is is got enough space that it can be grabbing toxins as, out of the blood as this liver is pumping through and it grabs them and it sticks them in the bile and it grabs them sticks them in the bile and it grabs them it sticks them in the bile so bile needs to be flowing or your liver can't do this so again hierarchy to these problems you have to work your way up but then we need to support your liver anything you do that supports the gallbladder is really going to help your liver so again as mentioned tudka um bile acids can help the choline can be really helpful here you can be looking at again castor oil, uh, castor oil packs could be really really helpful um especially if you have observable pain or f uh, physical discomfort that they could be a really really good option um fasting is amazing for your liver it's probably the one of the best things um it gives your body a massive break anything that you digest any food that you eat must go through your liver so anytime you break any food molecule down before it becomes usable by your body every protein every carbohydrate every fat every mineral every single thing that comes into your body goes through your liver so not eating for some time takes a lot of work off of your liver and allows it to catch back up on jobs that it, it hasn't been able to do fasting is, am is amazing you do have to be cautious if you have adrenal fatigue you know you have to find a way to make this work for you i do have videos on this as well you again you can go on youtube how to fast to heal william dickinson you will you will you will find it really helpful video um and you've probably heard a bunch of other things as well you know milk thistle can be helpful um digestive bitters can be helpful digestive enzymes can actually be helpful here as well um there, there's a lot of different things i think the supporting your liver is quite a popular thing let's say nowadays one thing i will say is you have you have a lot of detox and drainage pathways in your liver so from from here down it's quite a, a one-way street you know it's quite a one-way system it's very like this 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 in your liver there's a lot of different steps you can think about it so so you've got methylation you've got glucuronidation you've got you can go on google you can type stage one and stage two liver detox processes and you'll see there's a lot of different things it's really going to depend on where you struggle as to where you need to support just throwing random support at your at your liver can be helpful but if you can really understand where your liver is asking for help and then helping it there that is generally more helpful so you have a methylation problem you know say you've got the mthfr gene and you don't methylate very well providing some folate is an amazing thing to support your detox mechanisms at that stage if you have mtr and mtrr methylation um snips providing methylated cobalamin can be really really helpful if you've got a bhmt mutation choline can be really really helpful or betaine like the betaine hl as i mentioned so this is really looking with regards to methylation at your genetics that can be really really helpful and then for all these other steps you know there's a lot of other things you can do you, there's other testing that you can look at uh, there's other genetic snips you can look at there's that this is one of these more complex stages and i would say this is probably the point where you should get help like this is more of a, the more individual this is th this this whole like liver thing is a lot more person specific um and there's not really any way to know other than like collect a lot of data try a couple of things and then work based on your symptoms as well step up from here as i said your liver is a filter that's filtering your blood so the step from here is we need to get your, your blood moving this is really easy you just get yourself hot however you do it so this can be exercise this can be getting in the sauna this can be a lot of different things anything that moves your blood around your body more is going to move it through this filter through your liver more very easy step but you have to do it practically you know if you've got chronic fatigue syndrome if i go back five years when i had chronic fatigue syndrome go for a run is not going to happen i had pots as well going in the sauna not a good idea so you have to find a way to make it work work for you and again this is hierarchical you have to work on these previous steps before you can do this and the, the like right at the top we need to mobilize these toxins out of your cells single best thing you can do here is fasting but this is why many people are intolerant to fasting or why it's so hard you're pulling so many toxins out and you're sending them all to your liver if your li if these other processes aren't working your liver's just going to get overwhelmed you're going to feel horrible you're not going to be able to handle it it's going to be really stressful so intermittent fasting could be an option or we could look at just building your body up and supporting it so that you're able to fast uh, more effectively the only other thing that i would say i find to be as effective as this is bioresonance um i do have some other videos on that on youtube and i do offer a uh, bioresonance group program detox about once a month so if you have any interest in that go and check that video out so you can go you can go go on youtube and just type uh, i believe it's called 11 day detox bioresonance william dickinson and go and have a look at that that's also really really helpful for shaking the toxins out of the cells there are some other peripheral um detox and drainage pathways but 80 percent of the toxins that leave your body are going this way so i'm going to emphasize do this like do these things yeah we can look at your kidneys and we can look at your sweat and we can look at your respiration and your breathing that's not where most of these toxins are leaving and it's generally not where people have the blockages it's in the places that i've outlined and detailed so far focus on these so from 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 top to bottom you want to go constipation resolve it one bowel movement a day balance your microbiome improve your microflora make it so that your gut is working for you your microflora is an organ imagine if you were trying to heal without lungs you know you'd just die you need your microbiome it is an organ next your bile flow make sure your bile is flowing correctly make sure you have the ingredients to make new bile and make sure you're stimulating it to be released frequently ideally three times a day or two times a day if that's how, if you only eat twice a day and 
continue doing the intermittent fasting thing. Next, support your liver. It's a bit more specialized. Uh, maybe look at methylation, maybe work with somebody that's a bit more of an individualized thing, or just try a bunch of random stuff like everybody like everybody else does. You know, throw the milk thistle in there, try a bunch of different things. Next step, get your blood moving, get your blood pumping, exercise, sauna, things like that. Final stage, shake the toxins out of the cells. Sauna does also do this to some extent. Fasting and bioresonance, also really, really helpful at this stage. That is how, that is what your detox and drainage pathways actually are, and that is how you open them. This is where you should focus. There are other things, you know, you can do the, you can do the brushing, you can do the making sure that you're drinking enough, you can balance your electrolytes. There's other things, but I don't want to dilute this, this message. I really want you to focus on this primary pathway because this is where you're going to get 80% of your results. You now, if you've done all this and then it's perfect and you need to work on that other 20%, then do that. But that's, you probably wouldn't be watching to this point if that was you. Work on these main drainage pathways and they're going to be the place where you get most of your results. I hope you found this really interesting. If you do have any questions, please leave me a comment below and I will do my best to get back to you. That's everything for me today. Take care and happy detoxing. See you soon. Bye.